think a minimalist approach to the staging has worked the best. You know, some people have, there are, there are obviously scenes and there's the second half of the play is closer to maybe some naturalistic scenes taking place in a, um, you know, a specific room for a certain amount of time. Uh, but I think you still need to keep the whole play in this very sort of um, evocative, metaphorical, theatrical world, inventive world. You know, you really, you really just need two actors and two chairs. Uh, then I do think the other dimension that's really important is a visual and sound dimension. There should be a kind of, again, evocative and, and ghostly presence that can uh, that can place us in different, you know, specific locations for different scenes. But um, you know, any sort of uh, literal stagecraft I think works against the play in a lot of ways. You know, it's about memory. It's about consciousness, and to some degree, we, we are going to be within, we're sort of in the characters' heads. So if we, if we ground the production in too much uh, literalness, it, it doesn't quite work as well for the audience, I don't, I don't think. You know, audiences that, that seem to really get it, they remark how um, intimate the story feels for a play. Uh, and, and I think that's important. That's part of it, is, is that you welcome the audience into a very personal, private space, you know, with the actors, as opposed to, um, you know, creating some sort of literal staging for it. Um, something else that, that, that tells me that someone gets the play is when they read it, or even when they see it, and, the, and they say to me, it's actually kind of funny. And I say, yes, you know, it really is. It's not... It doesn't work if it's just, you know, an hour and a half of people talking about depressing things, you know. It, it, it just, that's just not me, and that's not what I think is, or what I hope is in sort of the fabric of, of the play. Uh, you know, so much of that rests on the Dan character to have a sort of um, self-deprecating sense of humor. So you need an actor that can put across, obviously there is a lot of pathos and a lot of uh, darker uh, material in the play, but you need somebody that can also put across the comedy, you know. Um, who can be, you know, both of them, because like any two-person show, you need, you need people that are, um, that the audience wants to spend an hour and a half with. Do you know what I mean? There's, there's a certain, I, I keep suggesting you really need to cast leading men, even though in some ways they could seem like more character -y parts, because they're actors who play many different characters. And, uh, but because we spend so much time with them, and we need to sort of, almost on a subliminal level, feel the heroic nature of the story. You know, I think the Dan character is, he's not heroic, but he's trying to live up to uh, his, his relationship with Paul Watson. You know, so you need two actors that, um, that, that are really leading men, I think. Yeah.